Hi, I'm Dee Good with Jala Mountain Center. And I'm here today with Erica Kaufman, who is the founder of Leela Yoga. And welcome, Erica. I'm so glad to meet with you today. Oh, Dee, I'm so happy to be here talking with you. I'm really excited to come back onto the mountain and uh, practice and teach and be and breathe deeply and laugh fully and whatever else comes to be. I'm very excited about it. So thank you for inviting me. Tell us a little bit about um, your approach to yoga and exactly how it evolved. Sure. Lila yoga is a Sanskrit, it's two Sanskrit words. Lila, which means the larger rhythm of life, it has a few definitions, but that's one. And then yoga, which means harmony or integrated, yeah, integral um, and whole, unity. So you take that and you have that larger rhythm of life that you are uniting with. And uh, another way of defining Lila is divine play. Not like just senseless play, although all play is good. It is the kind of play that happens when you are in a state of great awareness and you are trusting not holding on tight, you are trusting what you know, and you're not afraid of what you don't know. You're trusting that as well, trusting the process. And within that, you're free to play in a divine kind of way. And so Lila Yoga is the name that I chose. And I started practicing in my childhood. Mm. I started with my mother introduced me to yoga. Wonderful. So how long have you been coming to teach at Jala Mountain Center? Wow. Um, is it, it might be 18 years. It oh might my be, goodness. yeah, it might be 18 years. I was actually the first yoga program at up on the mountain and it was called Shambhala Mountain. Then. Mm -hmm. And um, at the time, I had a studio in Denver, and it was quite popular and meaningful to many of us, to all of us who were choosing to practice there. And the idea of having a retreat came up. And one of my students, who's just marvelous, and she scouted for me, and she went around. And she found that most of the places were really like uh, resorts. Mm -hmm. and when she was describing to me, she said, I think you're really going to like this one, which was then Shambhala, now Drala. And, uh, and she was right. I mean, the first time I came, I was moved. I was moved by the sweet smell of the trees. I was moved by the kind of uh, sense of truth, of realness. It wasn't overly polished, but it was comfortable. Mm -hmm. And that really spoke to me. I didn't want to necessarily go somewhere where I was going to have a manicure or, and not that there's anything wrong with that. It's just that when I'm going deep inside of a place of practice, nature is it for me. Nature is the best teacher. And, um, and Drala Mountain has that, you know, it's like I said, the trees smell sweet. The, mm -hmm. And now that I've been there so many years, I, I feel like I'm visiting family, even the beavers that built the dam that caused the beautiful little lake that now is there, uh, or pond. It wasn't there when I first started. But when I return to Drella, I, I feel home. And I get excited to invite other people there too, for those same reasons, because it's comfortable and, and yet you're in nature and there's a truth about it, an immediacy about it when the wind blows or when the sun rises or sets or when you, when you see a moose or when you, um, you know, it's just you're there in nature and it feels good as a human animal to be in nature studying myself and helping my students use the tools of yoga to feel more refreshed and balanced. 
So what can uh, participants expect when they take your program? Um, and do they need a lot of yoga experience or can they be at any level? Okay, that's a good question. Thank you, Dee. That's a really good question. You don't need to have experience. What you do need is to have interest. You need to have some curiosity and some interest. If you have that, you could be somebody like me who practices every day for decades, or you could be somebody who's never really tried it, but you're curious and you're interested. Uh, as long as you have those two things, I have enough experience as a teacher and I have enough confidence in myself to be able to handle that diversity of background and to actually use that diversity to enrich our experience. And um, so, no, you don't need to have a certain level of experience. Um, what to expect? I think every year I, I try to do something a little bit different. And last year was the first time that we had a retreat in person since the pandemic. And now the pandemic is officially over. And, um, and it was wonderful. It was wonderful. We were so brave and we came and most of it was outside. And it was like welcoming each other, like holding somebody's hand to come back out of, of the bungalows and the, you know, the, the places that we had perhaps retreated into. This year, it feels very different. Uh, I actually am just coming back from India. I feel very refreshed having come back from India. I was teaching at a very large event there and my colleagues are just extraordinary and very inspiring. And it was wonderful to hear their thoughts on and their experiences of my teachings and my contributions. So I'm coming with a lot of energy. I'm coming with a lot of excitement of what does it mean to be refreshed? That's one of the things I'd like to really explore. What are the tools that help us in the morning wake up and not feel drudgery or feel numb, but actually wake up and to really feel this life as a blessing, this life as an opportunity to, to flourish, to flourish. And I know it sounds odd, but we're all people. And so we know it's true. It takes courage to be ourselves and to let our true talents out and it takes courage to sit side by side with others who are different talents and uh, and different experiences and that's my interest i want to uh, help create an environment where we can flourish where we can ground and root into the earth and feel that connection with nature where we gain a little bit more confidence in ourselves, in our exploration of physicality, and finally, where we can be more comfortable in peace and in quiet. So those are my interests in this particular retreat. I always include a hike that is optional. Um, most often we have a bonfire, which again is optional. Um, there are sessions that are based on yoga asana, um, that are the physical practices. There are sessions that are more philosophical. Mm -hmm. There are that are more meditative. And there are sessions that involve chanting, um, especially chanting to regulate the breathing. Even if we're just doing om, it has a way of slowing down the exhale. I have a respect for Drala in that I am not Tibetan Buddhist, and I have always been welcomed onto the land and to teach from my truth and and from my integrity. And it's always been such a great joy. So that's a little taste of what you can expect. It sounds rich and wonderful and refreshing. So I hope folks will join us. Uh, it's going to be a wonderful program over the summer. Yes, I know. I'm very excited to return to Colorado. I live in Pennsylvania now. I'm actually here in my parents' cabin in the woods. Um, looking forward to returning to the beautiful mountain with Drala. Wonderful. We'll see you soon. And thank you again, Erica. Thank you. One last thing. Yes. People are
People are welcome, whether they have come in the past or whether they've never come. They're welcome to come with themselves and they're welcome to come with family or friends. Please, let's embrace our diversity and let's come together with that integrity. Very excited to do this. Thank you, Dee. Thank you.